Dear Methagony Aunt, Statistics is not my strong point. I really don't understand how to analyse data and gain a real feel for what is happening. I struggle when teaching the data handling components of the framework for mathematics, particularly when extending more able pupils. What sort of data might make this section more meaningful to the students and me? Thanks, Nick Thorne. House prices are in the news again. The average house price is now six times average annual earnings, whereas historically it's been a multiple of about four. Now, I went and did some investigation on statistics on the internet to find out about average, because what is average? I'm here uh, to meet Steve Pitha from Ellison's estate agent to discuss what these statistics mean. Hello, Steve. Morning. Really nice to meet you. And you. Um, having spoken to you on the telephone, and really appreciate that you're here because I'm really interested in what's meant by average house price. Now, I did some research on the internet looking at house prices uh, for Collier's Wood and for Wimbledon, and what I found was that the average house price here was £290,000. That was the mean average. What do they do to, to work out these average house prices? Well, it depends which source you look at. Um, there are mortgage, mortgage companies that give uh, averages based on the amount of mortgage lending that they do over a month or a quarter. Uh, there are averages that you can find on the internet which are given from websites, from estate agents putting their properties on the market. And you can also get averages from websites from the Deputy Prime Minister oh, which, really? which would give you information based on land registry information. As far as students in school working, there's just loads of statistics out there that they could go and investigate to get a real handle on, on that data. Oh yeah, I mean there's excellent graphs, bar charts, all sorts of things, um, and most of them will tell you how they've arrived at their averages. Some of them, uh, as I say, are over a year's pattern, and some of them are just properties coming onto the market. Now, we're off to Viner's School to see Stuart Hill with his top set year eight group looking at house price statistics. I just want to make sure that everyone understands what the mean and median mode are, OK? So I'm going to actually ask you to give me your explanations again. Right, so we're going to do the mean first, OK? It's when you add all the numbers together and divide by however many numbers there are. OK, so we're going to say add together all data values and divide by the number data points. Good. What would I divide by in each of these cases if I was going to find the mean then? Seven. Good. Okay, I'd divide by seven because there are seven data points in each of those lists. Okay, so we've got the mean. Stuart goes on to review the mode and the median. Now guys, we went away and we did a little bit of research. Okay, and we went to a local estate agent and he said to us, I have made this up, the average house price is £142,000. Great. Fantastic. What does that mean? Well, I have to be honest with you. None of you have put your hand up, and I'm very pleased about that, because it's very difficult to know what that means, isn't it? Newspapers are quoting an average price, so they don't tell us which average they're using, of £142,000. Now, how, how is that average arrived at? Well, that's obviously a national average taking into account everything from the West Country to Scotland, and there's right. going to be big extremes in between those two figures. So, Steve, how important is this average house price of £142,000? What meaning does it have? For us in our daily work, hardly anything at all. I might refer to it once a year, but obviously if you're a big mortgage company trying to predict how much mortgage money you're going to need to lend next year, and how prices have moved, you may refer to it very frequently. Um, but from this area, the prices vary by the style, the age, the size, the condition, and the road that they're in. Um, and those averages are much more accurate than referring back to a national price average. What might be some questions that you would want to ask about that statement I've put on the board that the average house price is £142,000. What might be some questions you want to ask? You want to know the mean, the median or the mode? Yeah, so we want to know which average, which is certainly a very good question, because there's certainly more than one average we could choose. We've just seen that, haven't we? 
What other questions might you want to ask about that data? Whether it's North London, South London, where you're getting the prices from. Um, right, so we want to know where those prices have come from. Have they come from London? It could be anywhere in the country, couldn't they? Good, so we want to know you know, where's this data coming from? Good. We want to know exactly what you're going to get for your money. Ah, very good. So we want to know what sort of houses are we looking at? OK. Are they three bedroom? Are they two bedroom? Are they four bedroom? Or is it everything? Very good. Are there any other sort of questions that we might want to ask about this sort of data? While the class continued to discuss the factors affecting house prices, Steve and I left Collierswood and went to nearby Wimbledon to find out how the house prices compared. So we're talking about a difference of £100,000 between where we've just been and here, just a mile away. So what makes somebody pay £100,000 more? Literally at the end of the road, you've got a very nice park, which is a conservation area, and there are a million pound houses facing that park. There's a very highly regarded school in the area. This is very often a location where people will be commuters. They won't even own a car. So these facilities are what drives the price. Now, we're going to do our own little bit of research. Now, you went onto the computers and you pulled off the computers um, a load of information about house prices in different areas of the country. Okay? So each of the tables, each of your groups, have got different sets of data. Okay? And what I want to know is, or what we want to look at is, how, do, uh, how can we use the averages to compare different areas of the country? Now, how you do it within the group, I want you to decide, okay? At the end, I want the three averages for the five different areas of the country, okay? The, the value in getting the pupils to collect their own data is that they see any issues relating to how data is collected. You think you might make a mistake, okay? So that's really important. Well, I think that the house price is quite good because like, when you're older, you can like, reflect on it and use it when you're actually buying your own house. 785. Yeah. Sir, we found the mean. Yes! 258,785. Is that sensible? Yes. yes. Why? Because the most of them are in the range of um, 100,000 to about 400,000. So it looks like it is about in the middle of yeah. my data, right? Fantastic. Now, what's the next one you're going to do? The mode. mode. You're doing the mode? Sir, so, we found the mode median and mean, but we have a problem. What's your problem? Um, we found an extra house at 140,000. The mode, it doesn't affect the mode. We've Why? Reworked out Why the doesn't it affect the mode? Because well, the because the modes, the modes um, most repairing, and this only the only one of that house. Um, it, we've re on, we done the mean. How did you redo the mean? Um, well, we got the answer. We, we multiplied got our got average by twenty three again to get our number. Then we added it on and divided by twenty four. Good, did right? Excellent. By That's very good. Twenty three. And have you read on the median? Um, no, no, because we now have e we have now have an even amount of numbers. So what do you think you're going to have to do? Do we have to? I think we have to do it halfway between the two. Right, it's going to be halfway between. Okay. Between now, guys, yeah. once you've got your mode median and mean, okay. Now look what happens up there. I've got average house price, 142,000. How many averages have you got? Three. Three. So which one are you going to use? When you say an average, most people think of add it all together, then divide it by. Right. And so therefore, most people are wrong, aren't they? Yeah. Because you know better now. If I said to somebody who's a statistician like yourselves or like myself, yeah. Okay, and I said average, what would be your first question? What average is that? And that's what I want you to talk about now. The aims of the lesson for myself were to get the pupils thinking and, and interpreting the data that they actually collect, rather than them just blindly going through and calculating these means, these mediums, these modes and working out these averages. I want them to think a little bit more about which was the appropriate average to use in certain situations and to therefore interpret what they were actually doing in the first place. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's have you back at the front, please. First thing I want to do very uh, quickly, I'm going to pick on a spokesman from your table. If you can tell me the values that you've come up with, OK, for your, uh, for your values of the mean, the median and the mode. One of you guys, please. Um, for the area we did like Birmingham and okay. places like that. Of England, yeah. um, our mean was two hundred and fifty-eight thousand seven hundred and eighty-five. We didn't get a mode because there's not two of the same number recurring. Fantastic. And um, the median we got two hundred and thirty-seven thousand. Excellent. Thank you very much. We we'll move to this table now in the in the front, please. Who's going to talk? 
We were in the Swansea area and the median was £114,950. The mode was £89,950. If we had to do it individually, it would be much harder to like get the information and things, but because we got to do it at groups, you had more ideas. Stuart went on to collect the rest of the averages, mean, mode and median from each group. That should be something like the figures that you worked out. So you can see you've got the different means across the top there, different medians, and look, only three of the regions, if we don't take the overall on the right-hand side there, have a mode. Okay. Now, one of the guys that didn't have a mode, tell me why you didn't have a mode. We didn't have a mode because there wasn't um, the same number occurring twice. Okay, very good, and that obviously happened with the other one as well, okay, which is why we've got a not available sign in, okay. And so we've got three averages for every region, haven't we? And I've only got one there, I've got one average. The one average Stuart is referring to is the average house price of £142,000 mentioned at the start of the lesson. So we need to choose between the averages. Now I asked some of you to have a little discussion about that, okay? And so, well, which average would you choose and why? Um, we thought that the, that, that the medium was the cheapest. So you went just for the cheapest because you think that would be the best thing for the buyers? Stuart took feedback from the rest of the groups before revealing that the best way to present the data is visually. The data from the first group is skewed. Why can you see anything on that graph okay, that would suggest why the mean is so much bigger than the median? Even though there's like a lot of houses in that price bracket, there's a few like over 400,000 and that pulls it upwards. That's exactly the kind of answer that I wanted. Okay, what we've got is we've got the majority of our data here, haven't we? All right, but we've got a couple of data points over here. And what that does to the mean is because you've got to add those in when you're doing the mean, that's going to pull the mean in this direction. Okay, will that affect the median as much? And the answer is, well, not really, because if my middle value is here, and I put another uh, value up here, my middle value is still going to be about here somewhere, isn't it? It's not going to affect where the middle of the data is but it will affect the mean because it's going to pull the mean in this direction. Okay. Now, does anyone know the posh word for when we have data that has kind of a big clump down one end of a scale and it's quite spread out down the other end of the scale? I very much doubt you've heard of the word. Maybe you have. And the word that I'm going to talk about is skewed data. Okay. It's skewed. It means most of it's clumped to one side of the graph, but there is some on the other side of the graph. So if we look at the London graph, well, I think you should be able to tell me almost immediately what uh, the sort of data you've got there and therefore which average you should use. Okay, who's going to let me know? Uh, the median. Use the median, and we'd use the median because? There, there's clearly more in that area than any other area. Okay, and what do we, what's the special word that we use to describe that sort of data? Skewed. Skewed, okay. Um, they, they gave me good feedback, which is always a good sign that their learning is good because if they don't learn well, they, they're not that confident. I put their hand up and give me some feedback. Well, Nick, I hope that you agreed. The data you get from house prices is well worth exploring with your students and that it will help them to understand why we have the three different averages.